What's up guys, my name is Abe Kislevitz and today I am finally bringing you a new tutorial. This one is actually kind of an advanced tutorial for users with After Effects and Premiere. And basically what we're going to be doing is walking through some cinematic polishing techniques for GoPro footage. Mainly we're going to be doing this by using Optics Compensation to flatten the look of the footage and get rid of the fisheye on the GoPro. You can do this in the camera with the new linear mode, but we're gonna be using optics compensation to actually gain a lot more pixels on the left and right of the image to allow for a lot of really unique and interesting cinematic moves to do in post. And on top of that, there's a couple tricks that I use when I have to rotate an image or scale it in a certain way, where I can get a little more pixels on the left and right in the corners sometimes when you're missing a little bit of that image. So I'm going to show you a couple of these techniques. These are all actually techniques that we use in-house to try to always maximize the amount of resolution that we're getting in the video footage. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be walking through a project that I did earlier this year. It was just a Karma video that I did in a weekend in San Diego. And the great thing about Karma footage is it lends itself really well to the techniques and polishing uh, things that I'm going to be talking about. All of this project was pretty much shot in 4K. I did a bunch of different kinds of moves with Karma, but nothing too complex. So to start out, I'm just going to show you a couple clips before and after the polishing techniques. So here's the intro, and you can see the horizon is doing quite a bit of bubbling here. That's the uh, fisheye distortion in the lens. I like to try to fix this with optics compensation. So I'm just going to show these three first clips after I did my fixes. All right, so you'll notice some flat horizons um, in this first clip. Let's watch that on and off again. So we've got some curved palm trees here. That's the uh, lens distortion. And then watch this shot closely. So it's just a straight shot. Now, after I did some stuff to it, check it out one more time. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm going to be showing you. They're digital moves, and people will never actually know that you did it in post or if you were actually flying it in the drone. So we are going to flatten that one out. This one a uh, little crooked and we can fix those super easily. It's pretty much well known that gimbals have a little bit of tilt. There are fixes for them. Some have them in the drones or in the gimbals. Some have them in software. So it's good to know how to fix horizons in post and that's one of the big things that optics compensation can help you do. So we're doing a little bit of reframing flat horizons. So to start out, I just had the color and graphics layer on top of here, but I'm just going to ignore that for now. So I'm going to deactivate that. So let's assume that I've finished my edit and the next step is getting it into After Effects. And you can either take the entire project by selecting everything and doing a dynamic link with After Effects, which means it'll open all of those in one comp in After Effects, or you can go shot by shot. It totally depends on how big your project is. Something like this, I might go the entire thing and then just deal with a big composition. But for longer projects, it's much easier if you just go shot by shot. So let's start with this first one. We just click it, you right click, replace with After Effects Composition. And that'll open up After Effects into a new project and a new composition. Okay. All right, let's name this Karma Edit graphics tutorial save so this first clip is brought in into a new composition so it's California Karma 1 linked comp the file is in here and the file is the exact length of my clip in Premiere and now a really big step that I like to do is I go back into Premiere right away and I undo what I just did so I'd hit command Z and what that does is it keeps it in After Effects, but I don't have that linked composition in my timeline. If you have a bunch of linked compositions, it'll get pretty slow because it's having to link through to After Effects. So I prefer to get it over into After Effects so I can at least work with it and I have all the same size and dimensions. And then I keep my Premiere timeline clean with all the originals. And then from After Effects, what I like to do is actually render out to ProRes when I'm all done and I can get those rendered files back into the timeline. So let's go back into After Effects 
And the first thing that we're going to do for optics compensation is we're going to drag the optics compensation effect directly onto the clip. So either into the timeline or on here. And I used to actually do optics compensation on an adjustment layer, but after talking to a couple of people at GoPro, we realized that it's better to have optics compensation on the clip itself because if it's rotated or anything like that, the distortion profile on the lens is always the same regardless of it's rotated or not, if that makes any sense. So we have optics compensation on the clip itself and field of view for GoPro clips, I usually have a standard for wide of 70. So I just go ahead and hit 70. And you wanna hit reverse lens distortion. So that pulls it out. When we scale it down, we have black edges on all sides, so it retains that 16 by nine profile, but the fisheye has been removed. So under resize, we have off max 2X, max 4X, and unlimited. I do unlimited just to be safe, and let's check out what happens. So now you can see the content in the middle of the frame is still there, but it shows all the pixels that it had to pull out and stretch to make that flat profile. So now, we're at scale of a 70, we can scale up to, let's see, 92.7. So this is a 4K file inside of a 4K frame size, but we're at 92.7% and we are filling up the frame. Now watch what happens if we go to 100% and we turn off resize and now we want to go rotate and rotate our horizon. So the first thing we want to do is go to view, either show grid or show rulers. I like rulers. And then you can just click from any ruler and drag down some guidelines. So I'm going to try to get the horizon flat here. So I've got this guideline and I'm going to hit rotation and you can do really minor rotation changes by holding command and Let's get this looking proper. And if we need to, we can pull some vertical guidelines out. So maybe this house here to help guide us. Okay. So typically when you do a rotation of a clip, you'll see that you get all this black space. And then what you have to do is scale it up and it's not super terrible because we are filming in 4K and you've got a lot of resolution to work with, but I like to retain as much resolution as possible. So back when we go to resize, when we go to resize unlimited, suddenly all of this is already filled in. And we can even play with the scale. And so again, hold command and you just wanna scale down until you see the background. So right there I can see it. And if it's hard to see, sometimes I like to go up to composition composition settings and change my background color to something like bright red. Okay, so now let's go back to scale. You can see I've got red in the background and we'll just scale up until we can't see it anymore. So that is perfect. And you can see now we have a flat horizon and we have some straight lines. So beyond that, what I like to do now that we have all of this extra resolution is now we can start getting creative in post with opportunities to do some cool moves. So what I did in my original is, since this was just a straight moving drone shot, which is cool, but we can actually add a little bit more movement and fluidity to it. So I'm gonna hit P for position, put a keyframe at the start, a keyframe at the back, and for this first one I can move all the way over until I hit the edge. And then I wanna move it down so I don't see any of that red. And then I will go to the end of the clip and move it all the way to the other side until I see the red. And I'll get rid of that red. And now, while I've got this forward moving clip, it's also gonna be tracking from left to right and it'll kind of give this orbiting feel around some of these palm trees. So let's check this out. And obviously I showed you the very maximum from left to right, but you could do really minor moves, stuff that people really wouldn't notice. So let's go to just a little bit from the left 
and we will go a little bit to the right, not too much. And just a nice little minor move and we'll see what that does for us. So we just get a little bit of that orbiting effect. We'll turn off position just to see what it looked like before. You can see perfectly straight and we'll undo that. A little bit of that orbiting effect, which is super cool. So that is just like one little polishing technique that we can do with our clips. And that's something that I always look at for the possibility of doing something creative and something different that would differentiate your shots from other people's shots. So we're gonna go back into Premiere and I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna skip over the first couple clips because they're pretty basic and we'll show you this long one. So let's replace this with After Effects Composition. And the cool thing is, once you have that project open in After Effects, it'll open a new composition with your new clip. So they'll just keep stacking up in here. And if we look at the project, we've got both of our comps here. So we've got this new one. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is add my optics compensation. So I can go actually back to the first one and click on the clip and the effect controls, optics compensation, command C for copy and command V for paste. So the very first thing I want to do is get my horizon straight at the very front of it. So let's pull down a horizon line. And it looks like I had already rotated a little bit in Premiere. So let's do a little more just to get ourselves straightened out. That looks pretty good. Okay. And now I'm going to scrub through, just make sure we are keeping it straight. And so now you can see when it hits the very edge of the horizon, 70 might not have been enough. So we can either pull up our FOV, uh, which is always a possibility, but sometimes it gets a little too warpy when you go above 70 down below. And then also it looks like the horizon is a little tilted as we came up, but it was flat before. So what I want to do is keyframe the rotation at the start and then wherever it stops the uh, crookedness. So maybe up here and I'll add another keyframe and we can grab another guideline, drag this down right in the middle and we'll do our rotation. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we should be keyframing between these two points and we should be good to go. And at any point, if you wanna get rid of these guidelines uh, just to view it without that stuff, hit Command semicolon. That'll bring them up and down. The other thing we forgot to do was scale it down since we do have this extra room with the optics compensation. So I can hold command, scale it down until I see the background, which is right there. So you can see we went from 104 scale because I had already done a little bit of rotation on the horizon in Premiere all the way down to 91.7%. So we are gaining that much resolution back. We're not having to scale. We have a flat image. And that is one of the big benefits of filming in 4K in the Hero 5 and the Hero 4, and then doing your optics compensation in post rather than using linear mode on 2.7K, for example. So I would say whenever possible, if you know that you're gonna be doing post on something, Film in 4K if you don't need that extra frame rate, and then you have all of this extra resolution to work in post. And especially if you're working in a 1080 timeline, you have a ton of extra room to resize, reframe, do some cool zollies, pans, digital effects with optics compensation and your 4K clip. So 4K alone, you already have that ability to reframe and resize, but with the combination of optics compensation, you have that much more extra real estate on the left and the right to do really cool visual effects. And I like to do the same thing with time lapses because you have that full 12 megapixel 4.3 and so you can add optics compensation on top of that. 
and do some really cool digital moves on time lapses that otherwise were static. Okay, so we are going to save this and go back to our Premiere project. And I'm just going to skip through a couple of these. So this clip, for example, it is a cool clip of Justin. He's skating by. It's pretty obvious that I was trying to film the drone right down the middle of the road, but you can see it's a little off. So if I uh, pull up my guides, um, safe margins. So this is the middle here, and the middle of that bridge is over there. So that's a little stuff that I like to look for and fix in post. So I'm going to right click, replace with After Effects Composition. It's going to bring up a new composition. So what I can do here is I'm going to bring up my title action safe. It shows me my center guideline. I'm going to pull out a ruler. There's my center. So what I've got to do is if I just tried to move position over here, obviously I've got this extra space over here, but if I paste my optics compensation on it, you can see already we have all that extra real estate left and right. I can show you how much we have to work with. All of that extra real estate left and right. So now I can really line up the shot and get the frame that I was going for initially that I might not have gotten. And now I have this nice artsy frame it stays relatively in the center, but if it doesn't, again, we can keyframe it. And you want to be careful with keyframes, so you want to have the keyframes pretty much go from the start to the end of the clip, because you don't want it kind of stopping and moving in the middle of the clip unless you're going to do some nice um, Bezier curves on them. So we'll go from the start to the end, and just move this guy back over. So we've taken an otherwise slightly off clip, made our framing a little bit better and we didn't really have to do much else to it so we're going to go back into Premiere and I'm just going to skip ahead to another clip that I wanted to show you guys so this is a shot where I was trying to follow Justin uh, pretty much straight down but as you can see I'm crooked so we can definitely fix that easily and you can totally see the uh, fisheye lens so we want to flatten that out Right click, replace with After Effects Composition. First thing we want to do is paste our previous filter on it. And obviously we will pull in our guidelines. So this one's easy. We just want to go straight down the middle, rotation, and then a little bit of position, and probably some scale. Sweet. So we fixed that. Now one of the cool things that you could do with a clip like this, and especially like I was mentioning, if you're in Instagram where you have a smaller frame size, it's all dependent upon how much resolution you're willing to lose. And what we can do, and these are some cool motion effects I've done in Instagram videos before, where people have no idea if you're just a really good drone pilot or they're in post. Honestly, people probably wouldn't ever assume they're in post, but and that's why it's pretty cool. So I'll go to the start of the clip and hit rotation, and we'll start here. And let's say by the end of the clip, we are going to be a full um, 180 degrees. So we're going to go upside down. I think we're about there for 180. And now, over the course of the whole clip, it's going to be an overhead shot, but it's also going to be spinning. So we're tracking with him and we're spinning, which is a really hard move to do with a drone, just getting it right the first time. So something like this in post is really cool. Now, even with our optics compensation, you can see since we are in a 4K timeline, um, we still have this black space. So what we can do here is just scale up. Obviously, for YouTube, we're trying to retain as much resolution as possible, but something like a 4K clip scaled up will look similar to a 720 clip. Um, we can scale all the way up, which we are at 174%, which is a lot. Um, but if it's going on the web or on social, people probably wouldn't notice. So 
So you can see how if you're using a different frame size, something smaller like Instagram, let's go up to composition, composition settings, just to show you, I usually do Instagram at 900 by 1200. Let's say three to four ratio. And now if we scale it down until we see the black edges, okay, we can go all the way down to something like 65%. And so now we have this awesome 4K drone shot scaled down to 65%, so we retain a ton of quality. And this awesome shot that is flying vertically and rotating over time. And I actually did this in the Instagram version of the edit. I didn't want to do it on the web because I lost a little too much resolution, but for Instagram, it's super cool effect. Let's go back into Premiere. And I actually forgot to unlink the very important step, a couple of these. So I'm going to hit undo, undo, undo. And now I have my original clips back in the timeline and I will be going through After Effects one by one and rendering these out once I finish it. So I'm just going to make sure that project is saved. And the last clip that I wanted to show you guys was this one, I believe. So the actual clip is the drone drifting from right to left a little bit. You can see I start in the middle here, pretty much lined up in the middle. And then I'm tracking to the left because I'm going to try to shoot through this gap. And what this actually allows me to do is a cool kind of orbiting effect because the parallax of the clip is changing. So you can see in the beginning, I can only see the front of this. And then in the end, I can see the side. So what I'm going to try to do in After Effects is keep this in the center the whole time and that will create a cool kind of orbiting parallax effect. So let's try it. Replace with After Effects Composition. We've got our composition here. We're gonna paste Optics Comp, and I'm gonna grab my guidelines, center. So at the beginning, position, we're actually gonna scale down because that's what we do first. So position, holding command, getting a super fine adjustment, adding a keyframe, and then towards the end, you can see how far off this goes. Let's keep this in the middle. This little yellow, little yellow, this little yellow guy. Okay, now check this clip out. So essentially what we're doing is we're keeping this in the center the entire time. So even though we are changing perspective, it's almost as if we're orbiting around it and keeping our center of focus in the middle. Whereas before we just had kind of a simple shot of it tracking from right to left. And instead we get this pretty cool orbit shot. So these are all little things that I look for when I'm editing video, little polish techniques that can enhance the shots or make it look a little bit differentiated from the typical drone shot or the typical static shot. And speaking of static shots, there's a lot we can do with the classic drop cam. So where you just have a camera and you set it down or you have a time lapse, something that's static and not moving. There's a ton of ways that we can utilize those to give it more resolution and do a lot of cool things in post. So I'm actually going to show you something that I did in the Japan Snow Project, which was a couple years ago. But pretty much every one of the clips in that project, I did some sort of thing like this to it. And I think altogether, people might not really notice the individual clips, but altogether, your video will have a lasting impression of, I don't know why I like that, but there's something different about that video. So let me show you in Japan Snow, so you can see this shot, the guys are walking across the field, but the camera is tracking with them. So they're always staying in the center of the frame. See that? So I'm not moving my mouse. They're moving across, but they're always staying in the center of the frame. And typically you would do that by maybe putting a 30 foot dolly alongside these guys and having a long lens 
and shooting it while it's moving and moving at the same rate as they are so the background is moving relative to them so you can see background is moving they're moving uh, but really this was just a static camera where I ran up stuck my ski pole in the snow it was super crooked but using optics compensation and a couple other effects that I'm going to show you I was able to pull out the left and right and animate it so that I could keep them in the center of the frame the whole time. 3840 by 2160, this is a 4K. Okay. And we will take the clip. So this is me trying to set up this camera haphazardly. I think I missed them first. Told them to hold up. I think it was windy. Okay, so here's where I actually set it down. And my final set, this was before I had a Hero 5, so I didn't have a screen on it. And you can see it's insanely crooked. So that's where optics compensation is gonna really come in handy where we're gonna correct that horizon line. So I am going to grab just from, let's say here, start to there, finish. And we're going to grab that and put it into our composition. OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is paste optics comp on here. Cool, we've stretched it out. Let's drag our horizon line down. <laughs> really crooked. We're going to rotate. OK. Great. I want to keep these guys in the center the whole time. So if you watch it, without anything, any animation, they're moving across. But the clip that I had, they stay in the center. So if I go position, now see how much room I have on the left and the right. You can see I can pull it all the way until there. And then I can keyframe the position to start and the end. We will go all the way. You can hold shift and drag and you'll get a faster movement in the slider. Okay, so now they are walking and moving. You'll notice that we started here and we have a little bit of black. So I'm gonna show you a couple techniques that we can do to fix that. And I'll even go further to scale this down and retain even more resolution. So let's see, I'm gonna scale this all the way down to 80%, let's say. And now you can see I have a ton of black, so this is a good example. And let's reframe this so the position there in the middle, there at the middle. So you can see I've got all of this black space, the frame is moving across. So there's three different tools that you can use for something like this. The first one is for really, really simple things and little minor fixes. I use this when I have a little corner that's out um, but it's the liquify tool, which is very much like the liquify tool in Photoshop. So what I want to do is drag it actually underneath optics compensation. And for the sake of this, I'm going to turn off optics compensation. And you can see how much I just lost with the optics compensation. So I gain all of that extra resolution. And you can see I need to pull out a little on the bottom, a little bit at the top. But this frame, there's not a lot going on. And it's static, remember, so anything that I do the movements are just relative to the position that I've moved. So I can pull this out all day long and nobody would ever really notice. And that's the great thing with static shots is you have a ton of room to play with them. The first thing we're gonna do is make our brush size bigger. Really big. That's, that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna turn off optics compensation and so we wanna pull it out and you just, just like Photoshop, you can click and drag things up. It's very slow. But you see what that did. So we're clicking and dragging. And you can see how this would really help just for a little corner here, a little corner there. When we're trying to do big things like this, it's really slow, but I'll show you with optics compensation on. So that is the liquify tool. There are better options out there. Next, I want to show you the mesh warp tool. So mesh warp, we're gonna drag this underneath again. And basically what it's gonna do, I'm gonna turn off optics compensation. It's gonna turn 
your clip into a grid, and all of these points are draggable. As you can see, it's much faster than Liquify. And something like this is you can actually reduce the rows and columns, the, the size of the grid. So if I just need to retain them in the middle here, I can reduce this down to probably five and three, maybe. Actually, I need a little more because I kind of want to drag out from behind them. So they start and move across the frame. So maybe five and five. Yeah, that's perfect. So let's turn on optics compensation just to see where we need more room. So we don't need it in this corner, but we do need to pull out the bottom. We need to pull out the left top and the right top. So I can actually leave that on and select both of these at the same time by holding shift, the third one and the fourth one maybe, and just pull that up. Already done. Grab this one, this one, this one, and that one. And what it's doing is it's only affecting the pixels within this area. It's retaining everything up above. So these guys are left safe. Down below, those guys are left safe. So I'm gonna pull this down, easy. And now once I pull the left and the right, so I'm gonna just click on everything here. It won't affect them and I've already pulled it out. And we will scroll all the way to the end. You can see we get a little bit on the end here, so we're gonna grab this far edge and pull this out as well. Done, easy. All right, so now you can see if we go to scale, 80% scale at the beginning, and I can turn off optics compensation, turn off mesh warp, and that is how small the frame size is without all of these effects, which is super cool to know that we've gained all of these extra pixels. So the last effect that I'm gonna show you in this same scenario is called motion tile. And what motion tile does is I'm gonna turn off optics compensation for now and drag this above it. Motion tile basically will mirror the edges and stretch out your clip. And so you just tell it how far your output width and height is gonna be. So you can see it's just dragging it out and the height is gonna drag it out and we want it to mirror the edges. And so you can see it's doing some mirroring of the edges but we're gonna turn on optics compensation, which should account for any of the areas that we are interested in. And so remember, especially because this shot is static, so if we turn off the positioning, so there's nothing changing about this clip except for the snow a little bit, but it's totally static. So any of these mirroring effects, the motion tile, uh, is totally fine because it's not really going to be seen. Now once you have motion in the clip, that's when you start to get interesting artifacts with motion tile and stuff like that. But you can typically get away with it with slow moving drone shots or anything where it's not really rotating and changing a whole lot of the scene. So there you have it. That is how we took a very simple very crooked drop cam and turned it into kind of an artistic shot that was used in the final piece of Japan Snow. And remember you can use these techniques for time lapses and for anything static, any basic drop cam. So let's go back to Premiere and our last step, once we're all finished with all of our changes, let's say we got everything covered in here, we will render these out. So we're gonna go up to composition, add to render queue, and I'm gonna just do a ProRes. Save these out into a folder, and then one by one, drag them over each clip into Premiere, or I could even line up all of these compositions in After Effects into one giant composition. Single composition, okay and then we would drag these out and render them all out at the same time. And those are two ways we can get it back into Premiere. 
And so now let's just watch through with some of the changes on. And for this video specifically, I use these cinematic bars on the top and bottom. That actually allows you to reframe vertically a lot more as well as horizontally with optics compensation. So you can really get the frame that you wanted. And then we reveal the full thing right here. So we've got this clip and for coloring, I actually just did a couple little curves inside of After Effects itself. So that is before, that is after. Uh, this is be, this is after, this is before. We are flattening out the clip. This is after, this is before. We fix the horizon. We do a little bit of rotation. Fix the horizon. And this last one, we have a horizon fix. And we also reframed it because I had a lot of sky. And we have the black bars. All right, thanks for watching. Again, I'm Abe Kislevitz, and this has been a tutorial and tips and tricks from inside of the walls of GoPro. These are the things that we use for video files to make our stuff look a little bit better. Hopefully you guys have gained some knowledge of how you guys can take these tips and tricks and use them in your own videos, in your 4K video files, losing that GoPro fisheye look with optics compensation, and also utilizing all of that extra room on the left and the right to do some creative moves and some artistic moves within After Effects. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you next time. Thanks.